Good morning, pot pickers. Uh, happy Sunday, the day after yesterday. Busy day yesterday on uh, the YTPC. Had great fun um, joining as a guest for the virtual pipe club on YouTube. Check it out. <clears throat> well, this morning I decided I'd get a. I'd better be true to my original uh, raison d'être of my channel, which is to talk about tobacco in its many forms. And this morning, I figured I'll do a video on Solani Virginia Perique, uh, Virginia Flake with Perique, uh, blend 633. Um, this is a 100 gram tin, which I purchased, uh, I think from GQ Tobacco's January 2020. Um, I haven't opened this one. Um, I, have, I, have, I bought two tins at the time, and I opened one and left one in the cellar. The surprising thing with these is, is that they're not sort of air sealed or anything like that. They come in this big uh, sort of plastic bag, which is folded over several times and then just closed with a, with a bit of tape, paper tape. But it, it does seem to, um, to keep the humidity. Um, I've had several of these 100 gram tin boxes, uh, these larger boxes, and they always do seem to keep their humidity perfectly well. Um, so I don't quite understand how that works, but um, it does. So it's a nice presentation. I like these big boxes. Um, as I say, I already had one box and I jarred it up. Um, and there it is. So this was bought at the same time, January 20. So the aroma straight off is molasses. It's sweet, sweet, like very deep stewed fruit, but it's it's not like figgy, it's even deeper than that. It definitely got a molasses kind of uh, note to it. There's an earthiness there, there's a fruity sweetness. And the, the Virginias really come through as, as quite a, an earthy molasses type of aroma. You don't get a, a, a really bright lemony style Virginia aroma coming through. Oh, incidentally, this is my little dinosaur, which my daughter gave me, my six-year-old. It was my 29th wedding anniversary yesterday, which I completely forgot to mention on the various uh, um, channels I was on last night. <coughs> so, 29 years and counting. All right, let's take some of this out. So, when you buy the 50-gram tins, um, what you get is um, the square, smaller tins, sometimes the round tins. Um, and you will get fairly uniform flakes. Um, when in the 100 gram tins, you get kind of these longer, larger flakes. Um, and actually, these ones are in pretty good condition. The first one, the first tin was more, more like belts, a little bit more broken up. Um, but uh, yeah, I suppose they were flakes. Maybe they've gotten more broken up when I stuffed them into the jar. I've actually. No, there's actually enough room in there. I, I do find that if you stuff them into a jar which is too small and you just keep pushing, you will get your tobacco in, a lot of tobacco into these jars, but eventually, if you stuff it much too much, you're expelling any air that's in there. Expelliarmos. Um, and you're expelling any air that's in there, almost creating a vacuum, sort of beyond the first inch of tobacco, which is getting some air to it. But beyond that, if you really press down hard, you're basically making a vacuum and that will not age as well you do need to get some air to it um, so <clears throat> just uh, something which is worthwhile anyway in my experience I'm not saying that it's gospel but in my experience it's good to leave just a little bit of room in there so that it's not too a little bit of sort of movement when you do that it shows that there is some air in there and that's fine so you can st you see straight away that there's some really nice Red Virginias in there, some really dark, ruddy kind of color in there. There's bright Virginias. Uh, so presumably this being a flake, it will have been pressed in a large cake and then cut into slices. Um, so you'll see in a single strand, different colors in a single strand. That's because of the way it's pressed and cut. Um, so you've got the brights, you've got reds, darker browns. Um, so a, a, a nice mix of Virginias in there. And obviously the darker bits will be Perique as well. You see the aroma once it's broken up. Yeah, very much the same. 
maybe a, a slightly brighter note coming in now now that it's opened up a little bit and broken down and rubbed out so I'm gonna leave that it's not too far off being ready I'll leave that for another minute or two and then we will load the pipe all right so this uh, tobacco is pretty much ready to go there's still a little bit of bounce in there but it's uh, in pretty good shape Actually, I might let it sit just a little bit longer. In terms of the pipe, I um, recently just added a few more pipes to the board here. Um, this is my uh, Apple, my Boswell, Radice, Bentley, Escorti, Paul Menard. Uh, so basically what I'm doing is, is I'm actually slowly just building up this area to have the pipes in my rotation. And there's one or two which I'm not necessarily in my regular rotation, but I'm, I'm slowly getting it to how I want it to be. So I've got the pipes that I smoke regularly to hand. Um, anyway, I'm gonna be doing it in this pipe here. Uh, this is uh, an apple that I did not so long ago. Um, and this one is a rustication which I tried out as a faux sandblast, so to, to mimic a sandblast, and it came out pretty well. Um, couldn't do it too symmetrical, too perfect, because then it would just look like a regular carve or rustication. So I mixed it up a little bit, and I think the look is—I think the look is good. Um, you know, I'm not trying to trick people and say that it's a, 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 a sandblast. I just like the look of, the, of a sandblast, and as I don't have a sandblaster at the moment. Um, if it was a pipe that I was going to sell, then I would have sent it to get it sandblasted. But seeing as I've uh, made this one to keep, um, I just um, rusticated it. And um, it's a lovely little pipe. It's very nice and lightweight. It's a nice classic shape, good balance, um, and uh, smokes well. I think we're good to go. Um, I've gone through various uh, stages when it comes to... Um, um, how I fill my pipe. Um, I used to do what was known as the, or what is known as the Frank method. And in, funnily enough, that was a method which I sort of came to myself and found out afterwards that it was a an official method, which was just to basically have it all in a clump together and squeeze the tobacco, push it in and then let go. And then that springiness expands and pushes against the walls of your pipe and you try to load it as near to the top as possible so that leaves a nice big air pocket at the bottom um, so that means you've always got a good draw and as you obviously smoke through the pipe and you tamp it you go all the way down but you're never over uh, sort of packing because you've left that, that room of air um, so you should always have a good draw even as you get down and uh, you know towards the end of the bowl but I don't do that so much these days and what I tend to do more is um, just gravity fill. So I put the tobacco in and I just tap the side of the bowl and let it drop in at its own pace. Just give it a gentle bit of encouragement, but other than that, it's just gravity filled. And I would say that the last, uh, the last pinch is done with a pinch and then let go. So it's kind of a mini Frank method just for the, the last one, whether it's this I don't count it, you know, I don't call it the three the three pinch method. Um, if it's three, it turns out to be three. Sometimes it can be four, sometimes it can be two. But that last one, I, I do tend to pinch the tobacco and just drop it in there and let go so that it does suspend at the top of the bowl, kind of. There we go. Okay, let's get it lit. My matches of choice, I buy these from the Danish pipe shop. And the main reason why I buy them is because they're a little bit longer than average matches. Just let the sulfur head burn down a little bit so you don't get too much of that sulfur.
There's nothing quite like watching the tobacco rise to greet you. So initial flavors, let me just get a second light on here. It's actually a lot smoother than I remember it being the first time. You do get the prurik straight away. The Virginias, the, the red Virginias, you expect a little bit of uh, richness coming through from that, but it doesn't come through immediately. I suspect I'll get that further down the bowl. But it's the perik, it's that sweet. Um, I find with perik you get a sweet sort of, a mixture of sweet, almost like an apricotty kind of flavor, like a, an acidic, brighter sweetness. Um, I guess it's a blend of the Virginia with the Perik um, that gives you that flavor. You get that with the uh, Dunhill Navy Rolls um, and pretty much all of the classic vapors, uh, the medallion type coins. Um, maybe with the exception of a Scudo, I I'm, I'm not really, uh, tuned into Escudo yet. Yeah? A lot of people really love that blend. I find it just a little bit more savory than I prefer. I guess some Virginia's coming through now. Um, the retrohale obviously improving on the flavor, giving you a rounder um, impression of the blend, giving you more of that perique. Um, um, but it's still fairly light, um, certainly in terms of the, the Virginias, and that um, molasses and depth of uh, the, the sort of the deep stone fruit kind of flavors, those aren't coming through at this stage. At the moment, it's really about the perique. Um, the, the sort of brighter notes of the Perique. Uh, so we'll see how it goes a little bit further down the bowl and uh, I will come back to you. Hey, um, well, I'm about um, halfway down the bowl, a little bit over halfway, um, and it's actually um, quite a, a lightweight kind of um, profile in the mouth. I actually thought it would get fuller and richer as I got down the bowl, uh, but that hasn't happened so far. Um, it's really quite a bright uh, flavor profile um, and you, you get the sweetness coming in from the perique, but that's kind of ebbed a little bit, not as, as, as pronounced as it was right at the beginning. And what you're getting now is grassy, hay, bright Virginia flavors more than anything else. So you're really getting a, the Virginia coming through. Um, it lacks for me, for my personal profile, uh, preference, it lacks a bit of the sort of the lower, deeper flavors. As I say, it's really more on the upper end of things at the moment, and the Perique would provide some of that depth, but it's kind of taken a back seat at the moment. See how it goes further, um, but for now, it's really quite a bright upper end of the flavor uh, sort of profile, the flavor scales. Um, bright, citrusy, hay, grassy. It's not even so grassy, it's more dry, citrusy, bright hay um, rather than grass. Um, but um, yeah, it's definitely on the brighter end of things. All right, so we've come to the end of the bowl and um, it's pretty much stayed the same throughout the second half of the bowl. Um, very linear kind of, very classic Virginia flavors, grassy hay, more like dry hay rather than grass. Um, a little bit of the perique accompanying it throughout, but really not um, as forward as the Virginias. Um, and for me, it, it kind of, the second half was very, very, um, 
linear. It was quite peppery, like a white pepper, typical kind of pepperiness that you'd get from a bright Virginia. Um, and the, the Perique really didn't lend very much to it in the second half. Um, but um, I think that probably it's going to need a little bit more time still. Um, as I say, this is dried up in January. Um, I would be interested in coming back to this in about six months to a year and seeing what it's like. Um, at the moment, I, it just seems to be, it hasn't quite yet come to its best. Um, uh, the beginning was nice, um, but for me, it lacks a lot of depth um, in the beginning as well. It was more balanced in the beginning, but less so. In the end, it was all very, very just bright Virginias. Um, and the uh, Perique really didn't enhance it at all. Um, but it, for me, as a blend to my particular palette preference, it lacks depth. Um, that's my uh, particular take on this. Something like um, Navy Rolls, Dunhill Navy Rolls or Peterson Navy Rolls has a little bit more depth. Maybe I need to revisit those and see if, if just my palate maybe has changed and maybe that will taste the same as this, I don't know. Um, that might be something I'll need to do uh, in the near future. So maybe that will be coming to the channel soon. Um, so that's been the Solani 633 with, with Perique. I hope that's been of interest. As always, it's always my particular palate. You know, um, what I'm my findings on this blend is not going, to not going to necessarily be the same for everybody that smokes this tobacco. We all have our own different uh, palettes. So that's just been my experience anyway. So I hope that's been of interest. I will catch you on the next one.